Hello, and thank you for joining me at Twin Astrology once again. I have some astrological information to share with you all today about this magical lineup that we have happening at the 1221 Gateway. But before I get into that, I just want to mention a few things. First of all, if you want to know more about me or if you want to know more about booking sessions with me, my website is Twin Astrology. I also ask you guys to subscribe to this channel if my messages resonate with you. And if you have subscribed in the past, just double check and make sure that you're still subscribed because I find that social media is just very unpredictable these days. Things are getting lost. Comments are getting lost. Um, I think they're unsubscribing people. So... Just double check and make sure that you are still subscribed if you want to be subscribed. And also follow me on Facebook and Instagram for the most up-to-date information that I'm sharing. Um, I am Twin Astrology on Facebook and on Instagram. I'm Marla Kelly 13 and You can find that information below as well. Okay, so the 1221 portal the winter solstice portal, which occurs every year on 1221. It's always a great time of change and clearing and preparation for the upcoming energies of the new year. Now, of course, this year we have Saturn and Jupiter making their big conjunction, and this is really shifting the collective energy and the planetary energies and the ascension process. But for Twin Flames in particular, there's another magical alignment happening. And that is an Isis, Osiris, and Horus conjunction. That's going to be right next door to the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in Aquarius. And that starts happening at the Winter Solstice Gateway and takes us right through to mid-January before they really start to separate. So this is a really important alignment for us. Number one, because Isis and Osiris mythologically represent twin flames, and um, I think of them as being the oldest representation mythologically of the twin flame energy. We're also completing a cycle from the last Osiris Isis conjunction that happened in the fall of 2018. So this is helping us wrap up that cycle and move into a new cycle and moving on to um, enhancing that cycle with some new energy. And then number three, this 2018 cycle focused on creating union. And now we're moving from that energy of union into the energy of alchemy, which is what happens when we find that union within or that balance of the divine feminine, divine masculine within ourselves. So let's just go over the myth of Isis and Osiris a little bit, just so that you can understand a little bit more about the energy of this conjunction. And I'll try to go over it quickly. So Isis and Osiris are brother and sister and also husband and wife. And they are the king and the queen of Egypt, and they're ruling Egypt, um, you know, very well. They're very loving, kind king and queen. Well, they have a brother, Set. They also have a sister, Nephthys, as well. But Set is jealous of Osiris, and he devises this plan to kill Osiris. And he makes this chest that's perfectly measured to Osiris's body. And as he's giving this party, he says, whoever can get into this chest can have it. So of course, Osiris gets in and his, his body fits in there perfectly. They seal him up in that and they throw him into the Nile. Now Isis is distraught. She goes down, she gets Osiris's body and she tries to hide it so that she can come back and properly prepare his body for burial. But Set finds it, and he cuts it up into 14 pieces, and he throws it about the Nile region. Isis transforms herself into a hawk and collects all the pieces. Actually, she collects 13. The only piece she's missing is Osiris's phallus, 
which she creates from something else. She puts Osiris back together and wraps him up as a mummy. On the night of the full moon, Isis uses magic, here sex magic, to bring Osiris back to life. This is the origin of sex magic. So Osiris can't stay in the land of the living, and he has to move on to become the king of the afterworld. But before he goes, he creates a child with Isis, and that child is Horus. Now Horus is hidden away until he's old enough to fight his uncle. And at that time, they battle each other. Horus actually loses his eye in the battle, which becomes the Eye of Horus, which represents him achieving higher consciousness. He defeats Set and he becomes the king of Egypt. And this is the lineage where all the pharaohs of Egypt are descended from. So there's a lot in that myth, not just for twin flames, but there's very pertinent information to guide us through this process of alchemy. So we have a lot of themes there. As I said, we have the theme of sex, magic, the balance of the divine feminine, divine masculine, the battle between good and evil or dark and light and how good will triumph over darkness and the form of Horus. There's information in this myth of where we get the mummification process, um, higher awareness, like I said, with the eye of Horus, but also with the balance of masculine and feminine through Isis's rebirth of Osiris and their joining together. That is the Kundalini energy and the activation of our Kundalini, which leads us to higher consciousness. Also, the resurrection of the dead, um, the afterworld, and healing our soul fragments. Because when Isis, when Osiris, rather, is cut up into the 14 pieces, that in some ways refers to how our soul is fragmented. And as we ascend, we reconnect with our soul fragments and we bring them back into us to create the sense of wholeness. So yeah, there's a lot there. Now Horus is the alchemy of the union of Isis and Osiris or the divine feminine and the divine masculine. So Horus here in this myth represents the third energy, our creative force, the creative force that we achieve when we reach that state of inner balance. We can also see that as what materializes from the energy of union in the sense that you're merging spirit, which is represented by the divine masculine in this case, and matter, which is the divine feminine. So, you know, you're merging the spiritual form, the material form, and you're getting this creation. So yeah, as I said, Isis is matter, Osiris is spirit, thus Horus is produced through the merging of spirit and matter. Now this is the 5D love and how the spiritual realm aligns us with the material realm and helps us cross these multi-dimensional barriers. As I spoke about in my last tarot reading, I think, um, you know, what we manifest starts out in the higher dimensions and then we bring that energy down. Abraham Hicks talks about it as our vortex and the things that we have in our vortex. And when we reach that balance, when we align with the zero point, then it makes it easy for these things in our vortex to thus materialize. But it's so important to create that balance and that's why I've been suggesting that you focus on the 5D connection with your twin because that's very powerful in your ability to manifest things. 
Now this conjunction too is happening over Christmas. And of course, that's when we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And historically, if you look at the myths of Horus and the myth of Jesus, there is a lot of alignment within those myths. Um, not the least of which is they're both born out of these miraculous births of a mother that represents matter or is in matter and a father that is um, a spiritual father, so to speak, that's in the spiritual realm, which again, we have this kind of bridging of the dimensions. So what is alchemy? Alchemy is transmutation. It's when we turn something into something else. And we um, talk about it a lot, or we think of it as in like medieval times where alchemists were trying to turn a base metal into gold. And um, in the spiritual sense, we are the base metal and we're trying to turn ourselves into gold. That gold represents higher consciousness or Christ consciousness. Our consciousness and our, our ability to create goes hand in hand because what we create needs to come from a higher source and it's only then that we're going to be able to advance truly into the age of Aquarius. So, th so this myth correlates with raising consciousness. Osiris becomes known with the symbol of the Jed and this is representative of his spinal column. It's actually a column or a pillar. It represents Osiris's spinal column and with that the path of Kundalini from the base chakra to the crown chakra. And when we have this union of the divine feminine and masculine, it opens the gateway within the Jed which connects us to higher dimensions, activates our light body and our consciousness. And it's through this pathway that we merge with our higher self. Also, Horus, with his battle with Set, loses his eye and is granted then true sight, which is spiritual insight. So higher consciousness needs to go hand in hand with alchemy and understanding our power as creators and being aligned with the will of God or higher truth and justice and divine purpose. Not my will, but thy will be done, which leads us into this state of surrender. This is the place where we need to get to, to really begin the manifestation process. So in 2018, when Isis and Osiris were conjunct, that was back in the sign of Leo, which is opposite of Aquarius. So it's basically, they've gone halfway around the Zodiac. But I wrote about all this, and I wrote about the cycle of how twins were beginning to work towards understanding that there is no separation and knowing that union is always there inside of you. So isn't that what we've all been doing the last two years? We've been trying to create this embodiment of union within ourselves, finding this balance within ourselves. And it was around this time, actually for me in 2018, that I was told I was going to reach union with my twin. That was on um, August 1st on Lunasad, right before the Lion's Gate of that year. And Isis came to me and showed me a way to activate this union within myself. And that really began to change my energy. That's what I recorded as my activation for Divine Union, which is on my Vimeo channel for purchase. But um, yeah, I really felt that internalized union happening. And I feel now I really embody that. And I know many of you have gotten to that stage or very close to getting to that stage. So this, uh, this 
new conjunction, this new cycle is showing us that we're ready to move on. And so when we're able to embrace that inner union, we really start creating the third energy more and more. So your 5D union, when you begin to acknowledge that within yourself without any neediness, it becomes this powerful force. So don't reject it. Don't belittle it. You do activate the, the manifestation process with your twin in the higher realms and in other dimensions. And I have felt this and seen this occurrence in my own life. So yes, twins that are in physical union can really um, be very creative on the material plane in a very powerful way. But everyone's soul must be purified. So just because someone's in union physically doesn't necessarily mean that they're embodying union and they're um, at this stage, okay? And I say that just because I don't want you guys that are in separation to get into this um, belief that you're not as powerful or that you're not as strong as creators because that's not true. And even twins that are together, it doesn't mean that they've passed all their initiations and they've cleared everything that they need to clear to get to really what is union. Because union is, it's not just a physical occurrence, but it's a higher state of consciousness. So... Yeah, just know that even if you're in separation, when you're in union in the 5D and you bring that into your physical body, you still are a very powerful creator. And through that 5D union, you're co-creating with your twin. So that 2018 conjunction is closing and we're moving into this new cycle. And this cycle sees us activating these gifts more, sees us connecting with higher consciousness more. And really this goes through the through the whole state of humanity. Everyone is expanding their consciousness, um, even though we're all in different places on the journey. And we're moving into this alchemy with this creative force. And also creating this deeper union with our higher self as well and working through any shadow that we have, any projections that we have that's been blocking these creative forces from coming through because I think most of you have been seeing over the last three months that even though you've done all this work, you've, you've suddenly had these subconscious things being shown to you where maybe you're not feeling worthy, you're not accepting, maybe you're still, um, your ego is still telling you that you're not ready for this or you can't do this or you need to do these steps. Um, and you have to now overcome those things so that you're able to welcome this next phase in. Now remember, things don't happen all at once. It's This goes in a two-year cycle, so we'll be working on this over the next two years. But I think you can see through that myth, too, that there's some very interesting political implications of this conjunction happening as well. Now at the same time, the divine feminine energies are being activated into deeper healing as well through Venus and Lilith. Venus, because she's going to be coming into a conjunction with the South Node and squaring Neptune. So there'll be some releasing coming up through karma. It is a very karmic time right now. Um, there is a lot of karma being released. I can see that in the aspects that are happening. So there is still clear, clearing and possibly purging coming through. And Venus on the South Node can definitely trigger that because it can trigger feelings of separation and abandonment and where we're still carrying wounds around love. And Venus in aspect to um, Neptune can, can be 
unconditional love, but what are the things that we have to clear based on our karmic past that are still not allowing us to fully be in that state of unconditional love all the time. Lilith is making a conjunction with Uranus at this time. And this is also bringing up healing. Now, in 2018, around the same time that I was writing about this, Isis Osiris conjunction, I was also writing about Lilith because Lilith had came to me with a channeled message about wanting to heal with the divine masculine and kind of let go of the past and move forward. So we've also been doing a lot of work with that. In 2018, both Venus and Mars were retrograde. This year as well, Venus and Mars were retrograde. And so there was also this activation of healing of the masculine and feminine on those levels. And now those of us that are embodying more of the divine feminine, I feel you're ready. You've cleared a lot of that Lilith energy and there's a shift happening with that cycle too. Because with that Lilith energy, it's a lot about not feeling worthy, still carrying the feminine wound of Lilith, which was rejection and abandonment, being ostracized and even demonized, being persecuted, not being allowed in. It's all very patriarchal. And we've needed to, to heal and release those old patriarchal beliefs and rise above it. So let's talk a little bit about the nuts and bolts of this conjunction. It's officially going to be exact on December 20th, the day before the winter solstice. And they'll be moving through conjunctions, um, kind of chasing each other pretty closely until the end of December. Now, they will be making exact conjunctions across several degrees and Horus will be two degrees ahead of them. So the three of them won't make an exact conjunction. But what happens is we have Isis Osiris conjunct, and then Isis begins to pull away from Osiris and makes exact conjunctions with Horus for a few days, and then eventually Isis begins to pull away. And Osiris and Horus get close, but they don't make an exact conjunction, but I think they come like within one or two degrees of each other. But that is enough. That's powerful enough. Um, and then, so yeah, Isis and Osiris are in conjunctions till the end of the month, and then around the 31st, which is New Year's Eve, then Isis comes into this conjunction with Horus, and brings that into the new year till around the 5th of January. Um, actually, until like the 7th of January. And they remain close for a few days after that. Now I want to talk a little bit about the Sabian symbols that they're on because it's not amazing enough that we have these three asteroids coming into a conjunction like this. But what is taking place on the Sabian of these degrees is also really exciting. So the first one is a Hindu healer glows with a mystic healing power. This is the, the degree of the first conjunction that they make. And this one really talks about the kundalini, too, and the kundalini activating the body and the inner power, bringing healing on this higher consciousness. Then they move on to a council of ancestors has been called to guide a man. This, again, is an indication that we're connecting with higher consciousness, that we're connecting with source, with our guides, with higher self, and that we are being guided from the other side. And one of the things that um, Linda Hill mentions, that's the author of the book I'm using for the Sabian symbols, mentions is the Akashic records. And oddly enough, those three 
Asteroids are also going to be conjunct an asteroid called Akashi, which I use to represent the Akashic records, and also Pallas Athena as well. Pallas herself also is an indication of healing and higher consciousness and stepping into one's true self. They're all going to be on the same degree. So um, I thought that was very interesting too. Now, while Isis and Osiris are on that degree, Horus is on a degree that says a child born out of an eggshell. So, yeah, I mean, this is really amazing because Horus, that's the energy of Horus, of transmutation, of this rebirth, regeneration, this third energy, um, I would say miraculous, right? A child born out of an eggshell. Well, children aren't really born out of an egg shell. So it gives us this kind of a sense of miracle or miraculous. And I believe Isis and Osiris will make a conjunction on that degree as well. And then, well, there's another one that they're going to cross. A flag is seen turning into an eagle. This one is also about rebirth, ascension, transformation, transmutation. Isis and Osiris make their exact conjunction on January 1st at 10 degrees of Aquarius. And that Sabian symbol is during a silent hour, a man receives a new inspiration which may change his life. And that Sabian is all about inner reflection and connecting with our creative force. Now it's this, it's that inner silent connection with our higher self that creates the inspiration and the creativity that actually becomes the basis of our manifestation. So again, I think that's a really amazing kind of coincidence. But Isis and Osiris continue their conjunction for a few days, moving across a series of degrees. Um, the next one is people on a vast staircase graduated upward. That one is about also ascension and rising consciousness. And then a barometer, which can be seen has insights or shifts. Now that one, when does that take place? That takes place like on the 4th and 5th of January. So I don't know. There could be something that happens on the world stage that becomes a reflection of that. And the next one is a train entering a tunnel, which again could be something. So, you know, I expect January to be a little bit of a rocky ride uh, because Mars is going to be coming out of his shadow and making a conjunction with Uranus and Lilith, you know, in square to Saturn and Jupiter. So, yeah, it might be some intensity. Uranus is also going direct um, at the beginning of the month. And then we're going to have a few weeks where all the planets are direct, which always, you know, brings a lot of um, a push. Like wind beneath my wings is the way I want to say that. So we're able to move forward on some things. So if you've been feeling like you've been struggling to kind of set things in motion, or you've been wondering where your, your manifestations are, you might begin to see things appearing more and more rapidly. Although, like I said, this is a, an energy that's going to be with us through a longer cycle. So we're going to keep working on that and refining that energy. So what I'm going to kind of leave you with is this um, last paragraph that I have written from my 2018 article I did on this conjunction. The energy of the next few months is really exciting to our ascension process and for twin flame unions. These astrological alignments are basically putting our higher self in control. 
When this happens, separation and neediness moves out of the way, freeing us to let go and trust in what is coming. Ego takes a back seat to our heart. Resistance dissolves in the now moment. When the essence of our twin flame is integrated within, there is no pressure to search for this energy outside of ourselves. The magnetic charge of the connection, otherwise known as the push and pull, stabilizes. Physical connections become easier when we reach the promised land of surrender. So I think many of you will feel that we are moving even deeper into that energy. We're still, we're still letting go of separation. We're still trying to trust. And we've all been going through these tests of faith to get us deeper into this state of trust. But we're also rising above our egos. We're dissolving that resistance. And when your twin is integrated within, you don't put the pressure on your twin to have to do something in the material realm. Now, it's important, I feel, to let your twin have that space to go through their own journey. And it's when you really let go of them and you let them have the space that they need that they can accelerate on their journey and um, come to these own conclusions within themselves faster. And that is what I feel creates union in the material realm. So yeah, leave me a comment. Let me know if you're feeling these shifts, how you're feeling these shifts. Just in general, how are you feeling the 1221 gateway and the, um, the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction as well? So thank you for tuning in with me today. Happy holidays. And I will leave you with this blessing from my heart to yours. Aanakia ono so yotulia, ma anakia natayano sokira. Imana kia toyana, ashini kia. Thank <laughs> you.